Hello everyone. Now we are going to discuss about histology or microanatomy of uterus and fallopian tube. Uh, learning objectives. At the end of class, you all should be able to make out or describe the microanatomy of uterus and fallopian tube and you should be able to draw a neat and label diagram. Now, as you know, this is uterus. You know, internal genitalia and females where we have this uterus. Uterus consists of a body. This main part is called body in which there is opening of fallopian tubes or ovi ducts or uterine tubes on each side. The part above this, this is called as fundus of the uterus. This is called as body. The lower conical part which is opening into the vagina, this is called as cervix. Okay, so today, now in this here, in this topic, we are going to discuss about the uterus. So it has fundus, body and cervix. As such, this uh, wall of the uterus, if we say histologically, you should know the wall, what the other constituents of the wall. It has three layers, you can see from within outside. Inside there's a cavity, a triangular cavity and lining of the cavity is called as endometrium. Then second part will be the muscle layer, myometrium and third, the outermost covering called as perimetrium or adventitia or serosa. Okay, so this is if you take the cut section of uterus and uh, do processing and do H and E staining, you will find the cavity inside the empty space. Just outside the cavity, it will be your endometrium, then you have muscle layers, and then outermost will be perimetrium. So we'll be discussing one by one. First is perimetrium. Perimetrium, as you know, this uh, uterus is covered by per layer of peritoneum. So outer serous layer or visceral peritoneal covering of the uterus is perimetrium continuous with the pelvic and abdominal peritoneum and consists of mesothelium and a thin layer of loose connective tissue. So it will be simple squamous epithelium. Okay, so if you see, this is perimetrium. Okay, uh, beneath this there will be your myometrium. So uh, perimetrium you can make out the simple squamous epithelium as mesothelium also, you can say. Next will be myometrium. The myometrium is the thickest layer of the uterine wall. It forms a structural and functional unit or syncytium here. Okay, this myometrium composed of three layers of indistinctly defined smooth muscle cells. The inner longitudinal, if we are now we are going from outside towards inside, this is cavity, this is perimetrium. After that, we have the outer longitudinal, then there will be middle circular, this one, and inner longitudinal. So as you go inside, Okay, outer longitudinal, middle circular and inner longitudinal layer. Okay, outer and inner are longitudinally arranged fibers. Middle one is circularly arranged and will be having lots of blood vessels. So it is called as uh, the middle circular layer. Numerous blood vessels and large blood vessels and lymphatics, venous plexus are present. So it is called as stratum vasculare. It is the thickest layer and has interlaced smooth muscle fibers oriented in circular or spiral pattern. Okay. And the size and number of muscle cells are related to estrogen level. In pregnancy, there will be more estrogen, hyperplasia, and hypertrophy of these smooth muscle fibers will be there. So these are different layers, right? So as I mentioned, stratum vasculare is a middle muscular layer, okay? Thickest layer and very important here. During uterine contraction, all the three muscle layers together, they act, they contract. And that's why this is called as functional syncytium, expelling the contents of the lumen through a narrow orifice. Okay, now another part is cervix, the lower conical part. If we take the storage of cervix, actually this is cervix where it is continuous with the vagina. So this lining is stratified squamous epithelium, but this is here simple columnar epithelium. And compared to the body of the uterus, cervix will be having more of connective tissue, less of smooth muscle fibers. And elastic fibers will be abundant, but are found in appreciable quantities only in the outer layer of myometrium of the body of the uterus. So elastic fibers will be less in the body, but more in the cervix part. Now coming to each layer now, another uh, first perimetrium is done, myometrium is done. Now coming to the endometrium. Endometrium is the inner lining. So this is uterine cavity, the inner lining, this one, which is actually the simple columnar epithelium, which contains ciliated cells with cilia. You can see fine processes here. So ciliated cells and in between the ciliated cells, there will be presence of some secretory cells also. Beneath this, so endometrium consists of two layers. One is the epithelium and sub-epithelial connective tissue, lamina propria, which contains loose connective tissue, rich in fibroblasts and reticular fibers. In addition, there are presence of these glands, which are epithelial invagination. So these glands are called as uterine glands. Okay. So the microscopic structure 
of endometrium changes during menstrual cycle. There are different phases. Both myometrium and endometrium, they undergo these cyclic changes in the menstrual cycle. And in, if embryo implants, the cycle stops. And both the layers undergo considerable growth and differentiation leading to pregnancy. But here we are going to discuss about non-pregnant uterus, about the non-pregnant uterus, what normally the changes are happening. Okay, now endometrium as such, as I told, we have epithelium and lamina propria. But as such, whole endo endometrium is divided into layers. Okay, the endometrium proliferates um, and this uh, throughout the reproductive lifespan, which undergoes changes here, as I mentioned. So the changes which are happening accordingly, it has now two zones. The one layer, which is towards the lumen. This layer, the bigger one, one to six millimeter in diameter, called as stratum functionalis. Other one is called as stratum basal, which is in contact with myometrium. So endometrium consists of two layers: stratum functionalis, which is thick, superficial towards the lumen, contains the glands. You can see epithelial invagination; they are forming the uh, glands, uterine glands, lamina propria, rich capillary network. You can see these are all capillary network, and this is a part which gets sloughed off at the time of menstruation one to four day of menstruation. Beneath this, the part which contains deep, which is deep, narrow, and contains more of straight arteries. And this function, this is one layer, stratum basalis is the one which regenerates functionalis layer after each menstruation or in each menstruation, menstrual cycle. So basalis is a part which is regenerating the stratum functional, functionalis and stratum functionalis is a part which gets sloughed off, okay? So we can see here these are uterine arteries, they give rise to arcuate arteries. From arcuate arteries, we have straight radial arteries which undergo spiral curves and they are present in the, in the part of stratum functionalis lower part and gradually they form straight arteries and capillaries ultimately. Okay, And cyclic changes during menstrual cycle includes again three phases, menstrual phase, proliferative phase and secretory phase. We are going to discuss about these two phases. In the menstrual phase will be sloughing off. Soon after the sloughing off, there has to be proliferation, okay, which is under the ovarian estrogen effect. And after that, there will be secretory phase, which maintains uh, the progesterone actually. Proliferative phase after that, will be secretory phase, which is under the effect of progesterone. Okay, so two important, two important hormone which are uh, released from the ovaries and along with the ovarian cycle, menstrual cycle is going on. Okay, we can see here. Changes in the secretory activity of the endometrium during the cycle are correlated with the maturation of the ovarian follicles. So in menstrual cycle, under stimulation of estrogen and progesterone, endometrium undergoes cyclic uh, modification. So it is approximately of 28 days from puberty. It starts and it goes up to menopausal. And that is approximately 45 to 50 years of age. Okay. And uh, in first four, by first one to four days, when no fertilization happens, corpus luteum degenerates, there will be drop in progesterone and estrogen, and uh, the coiled arteries they constrict, there will be ischemia, ultimately rupture of arteries, hemorrhage, and shedding of functional layer. Basal layer remains viable and restore the functional layers later, later on. Okay, now after menstrual phase, uh, the phase, this phase for proliferative phase, it uh, coincides with the ovarian follicular phase, 5 to 14 days, where there is formation of uh, layers now. And uh, by day 14, regeneration of the endometrium is full, surface epithelium is formed, lamina propria, coiled arteries, uterine glands, they are simple columnar epithelium, lined by simple columnar epithelium, more of straight and having narrow lumen. So in proliferative phase, what all you will see in the slides of uterus. So if you are getting slides, usually we have two slides. One is in the day from day 5th to 14th day of menstrual cycle, where the phase is called as proliferative phase under the effect of estrogen from the ovarian follicles. There will be regeneration of the epithelium. Okay, so we can see in the proliferative phase, the epithelium is simple columnar and here formation of uh, lamina propria. Okay, and this is functional layer. And the glands are formed by the epithelial invagination. They are now small, short, short glands and they are covered by simple columnar epithelium. They are straight. They are not very coiled. So if you see this type of picture where we have somewhat straight glands, short, short, small glands, uncoiled glands, this is proliferative phase, early proliferative actually. Later on, uh, at the end of this phase, the endometrium will be up to the thickness of three millimeter. Glands will have narrow lumen and relatively straight. 
okay so epithelial invagination simple columnar epithelium leading to formation of these glands that is proliferative phase if you see if you compare the secretory phase it is corresponding with the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle begins just after ovulation depends upon if corpus luteum secretion uh, corpus luteum pregnancy is not there corpus luteum will be there it secretes progesterone which acts upon the glands and vessels the arteries will be very much coiled and branched there will be accumulation of glycogen and uh, the ducts will be more coiled okay coiled tubular glands will be there thickening of functional layer edema and secreted products will be there and lumen will be having secretions you can see so now the glands will proliferate too much they are occupying this coiled structure there the functional is that the the size of functional layer will be very much more okay so see how the gland the uterine gland is very much coiled columnar epithelium but it is very much coiled okay the endometrium will be now edematous and thickness of approximately 5 to 6 mm gland shape and large cork screw shape it lens classically their lumen becomes saculated as if filled with the secretory products surrounded by lots of stromal tissue okay so this you can see we have straight glands straight glands so this is a slide of proliferative phase we don't have uh, too much of functional layer functional layer thickness is average you can see glands are straight not very much coiled secretions are present okay proliferative phase is regulated by estrogen and if we see the glands here now the glands have more are coiled and functional layer is very much thick very many glands are there more edematous tissue you can make out okay so this is a secretory phase which is under the effect of progesterone okay so there are different phases you can compare now proliferative phase with the secretory phase of the uterus these two slides usually are given and you have to identify you have to draw accordingly okay so now we are done with the uterus now we are coming to the next topic oviducts or fallopian tubes or ovaries okay about 10 to 12 cm long and can be divided into four segments starting from the uterine cavity the one part this part is the intramural part the one this one is isthmus then we have ampulla and most serrated part lateral part which is in contact with the ovaries is infundibulum or you, uh, that lateral part the function as such its function is to receive the ovulated oocyte and provide site for fertilization to empty the suprolateral region of the uterus into the via the stomach okay it ex lateral end is more or less expanded and forming ampulla and this is ampulla having a fimbria which is actually taking up the uh, ovum okay now oviducts uh, as such it is a tubular structure you all know it has a lumen and a wall the wall consists of the mucosa from within outwards from lumen to outer wall if you go it consists of mucosa layer which consists of simple ciliated columnar epithelium then lamina propria sub epithelial connective tissue and as such the mucosa itself shows longitudinal folds very much longitudinal folds are there the folds are too much branching and rebranching that they are occupying the lumen completely lumen appears like occluded outside mucosa there will be muscular layer muscularis layer in a circular outer longitudinal smooth muscle fibers serosa outermost is a serosa as you all know simple squamous epithelium and uh, these oviducts are very important here it is a site of fertilization and early cleavage of zygote okay so mucosa you can see this is a lumen and how these lumen is occupied by number of folds exhibits mucosa this uh, exhibits um, relatively thin longitudinal folds that project into the lumen of the uterine tube throughout its length the folds are most numerous and complex in ampulla and become smaller in the isthmus as the lumen size decreases okay see here these are all mucosal folds epithelium lamina propria and their mucosal folds coming into the lumen now epithelium i said it is ciliated columnar epithelium simple ciliated columnar epithelium in which we will be having two types of cells the cells which are tall columnar ciliated with the cilia ciliated cell in between you will be having light stain cells they are non ciliated called as peg cells okay one is ciliated one is non ciliated peg cells two types of cells are present in the epithelium of fallopian tube in the mucosa so see the ciliated cells are these one and non ciliated are peg cells supporting cells okay so the non cilia they are secretory cells they have nutrition uh, the function of nutritive and protective function for oocytes and capacitation of sperm so fallopian tubes in a fallopian tubes we have ciliated cells the function is to beat towards the uterus so that ovum should move towards the uterine cavity ovum and zygote non ciliated cells they are function is secretory providing nutrition and protection for the oocytes and for the capacitation of sperms okay 
and uh, they, these all uh, the, the peristaltic contraction and ciliary activity together with the fluid move the oocytes or zygote towards the uterus okay now ciliated cells are most numerous as i said in the fun in fundibulum and ampulla and these peg cells uh, that produce a fluid provides nutrition to the ovum okay and also the ratio of ciliated to non ciliated cells changes during hormonal cycle estrogen stimulates ciliogenesis and progesterone increases the number of secretory cells these are important mcq questions sometimes they are asked in mcq so estrogen is for increasing ciliogenesis and progesterone is for increasing number of secretory cells now muscle layer as you go from away from the lumen outside the um, this mucosa we have muscularis layer this is all muscularis layer inner circular outer longitudinal you can see this is ls section this is transverse section longitudinal section and outside that in this we have serosa or peritoneum it is outermost layer and is composed of mesothelium and thin connective tissue okay so this is all about the uterine tubes and histology of uterus please read again and if any doubts you can ask me in the comment box thank you and have a nice day